I'm Steve Pullen, an MBE, and I do judo. What happened was, my father was actually a professional wrestler. But about 60 years ago, and it is over 60 years ago, I didn't like to do wrestling, as you do, don't follow your father. I went into this judo club, which upset my father, and uh, I liked it, and, uh, and that's how I got going. I started at the YMCA in Manchester. And then from YMCA, then I went to Denton Judo Club and got picked up by a very, two coaches I've had in my life, one called Joe Foster, and then a Japanese came into the Northwest area, Akinori Osaka, and he changed my life. Because he, he was Japanese and we started learning skills from there. I did seven years with him before I fell out with him, <laughs> as you do. <laughs> Well, at the time, judo in the Northwest area was very backwards. If you got to a brown belt, that was as far as you could go in the Northwest area at the time. You had to go to London. And what happens when Osaka came over, he transformed, not just me, but he transformed the Northwest area. He actually got judo back in, he just started learning things. We, we didn't really know what we were doing. Uh, our skill factor was very low, very, very low. Uh, with him, he really got through skills, and taught us how to do it, you call me, taught us how to hold down right. Little things that we thought were right, but accepted, you had to get it perfectly right. And that's what made us go and changed everything. And he also got hold of the Northwest Area Committee and started getting the clubs organised. So we got judo going and more, more development for the Northwest Area. One of the things is, I've not just done judo, I've done freestyle wrestling, and I've also done sambo wrestling as well. And also I did karate as well, and I've done a lot of boxing. And I was also swimming. Now, I was also did 30 years at Cheatham School of Music as head of PE department there. So I had a great life of doing sport. But in my judo career, I did very successful. I've done a lot of judo where I've got people high standard in coaching. I've got people to the Olympic Games and the Paralympic Games and world champions, both in both Paralympics and Olympics, and also European Games and the Commonwealth Games and international matches. Gets in a black belt with me, it just means nothing. I'm trying to work it out once. I think I've done about 600 people to black belt in my career of teaching. In the wrestling, I got to stand in rows on the Olympic team for wrestling in 1968. And what have you, went, then I got into sambo wrestling at that time, went to the uh, Europeans in Scotia. We drove there, we had no money. We actually drove in this little vehicle, five of us. Five of us in this little vehicle, and it was a fight off who could drive, because there was hardly any space in the Beetle. If you've ever been in a, a normal Beetle, there's not much space, but when you've got five of you, and it was just over two and a half thousand miles it was to drive there. And it was really, it was an exciting time. We did it, we was young, we could cope with it. I couldn't do it now, but we could cope with it. And then I went to Moscow, I won a bronze in the World Championships there in Moscow. And I've traveled the world in the sense that I became national coach, where uh, national coach from 1988 to 2004. Been to five Paralympic Games. Been to well, over 10 world, maybe, maybe more championships. Just kept on going. And the achievement is I've had people getting the world get, um, gold medals in the Paralympics, silver medals in the Paralympics, bronze in the Paralympics, bronze medals in the Olympic Games, and done very well. We have had a load of British champions, international. It's, it's too much for me to say. I just, you know, it's amazing, you know. And then I got a number of awards. I got an MBA in 1989. I won a Churchill Fellowship in 1890. Two, I think, in 89 again, I got the Churchill Fellowship. And people want to go down to Churchill Fellowship, and this is for people that's watching this. It's an organisation that actually will give you money to travel and do things that you can do. And it's anything you like, it's a fantastic organisation. I went to Japan and studied judo in Japan for three months, and they gave me enough money to go out there. And it was really fantastic. And we travelled around the world. I've also became UK Sport Great Britain. I won the uh, national coaching for Great Britain. Uh, at the end, uh, they put me all of fame. I mean, me and the uh, lad from United, uh, Ferguson. I went with him at the same time down to the uh, Princess Market, give me that. Uh, I've met the royal family. I've had 10 dues at the, the palace. I had a good drink there as well. 
And I've travelled, I've been to 89 countries and been to every continent. And I've still not finished. I've just come back from Ghana. I was out in Ghana two months ago and I went now coaching the uh, children there and also the Olympic team, which is paid off. They just got two medals in the All American, All African Games. And that was really fantastic. Good achievement that was. I think I've covered everything, I think. Oh, and I've done a lot of boxing as well. <laughs> Got a very understanding wife. Let's go right back to when I start, how it started to teach the VIs. I was in a pub with two other lads and we was arguing about visually impaired judo and it can't be done. And it, a lady called Eileen Carmel in Yorkshire just started it going with a visually impaired organisation called IBSA, not IBSA, uh, British Blind Sports. And the lad who was doing it didn't want to do it, Richard Barraclough, he didn't want to do it, and I took it on. And people said to me, it won't be, you can't do it, it won't work. And I said, why won't it work? Because they're blind. Well, first of all, never say it can't be done because I just don't believe that. This word can't and don't, won't, it's rubbish. You can and you will and it does. And when I still took it on, there was no books written. There was actually, there was no organisation at all for visually impaired judo. There was no referees, there was no books written down. When I was grading them, I had to grade them through the BGA and get them organising to get the grades up. When we went to a competition, <laughs> they asked me to be a referee there. <laughs> I went, there's a national coach. <laughs> I said, no, 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 I'm a national referee. Because I refused that. But I ended up joining that organisation as time went on, but because I was more worried about the lads. And the lads were asking me questions. Now, I did a lot of competition judo, but I just brought the skills back from what I knew. This visually impaired people are visually impaired. That's all they are. They just can't see. But there's no difference with, the, with them. They bleed, they talk, they drink, they relate love, they do everything. So they're just human beings. So they just treat them as human beings. They don't, they don't, don't break when they get hold of them. Matter of fact, some of the VIs are very, very powerful. Um, I had a lad called Simon Jackson who had started, who was a very young boy, very young lad, and we went to the Paralympic Games. Now, in them days, it was, wasn't taboo, but it is today, but I used to go drinking quite a lot. I still believe in that. If, do what you normally do. In them days, you did, every night you finished training, you went for a pint. And now today, if you don't, most people don't go for a drink because of driving. But in them days, it was good, it was good, and we got, and Simon did fantastic. Andy, I think, if I'm not mistaken, he was just 15. I think he should have been 16 at, at the games. And well, I sneaked him in. <laughs> I break a lot of rules at the time. I do break rules. I just, well, I don't break, I bend them. I bend them, you know, you know, and just get on with it, you know. And I, like, I used to take them running. And people say, I did, I did get VIs running. Well, they've got legs. It's, 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 all you have to do is guide them. You can make sprints, you know, this, oh, can't do that. Or oh, too rubbish, or oh, too rubbish. You, you can either win by throwing, hold down, harm, lot strangles. And there's no messing about, you do it. And the only way to do it is actually be physically fit. Fitness is a very important part of the sport. If you're not fit, you don't do it. Your timing goes out, your breathing goes out. And once you start losing your timing, your breathing, then you get despondent with yourself. So fitness is a very important part of the judo. And to get all around fitness is running, weights, well, but the most important part is you do the mat work, not the, the gym work. Some people do too much gym work and not enough mat work. Mat work is more important than gym work. If you can do judo seven days a week, you don't need to do gym work. If you can do judo five days a week, then you need to do two days gym work. If you're gonna do judo four days a week, then you do three days of gym work. So you've got how many times you do judo. And your gym work should be to the sport. We do exercises for groundwork and for speed for moving in it. Otherwise, you're not really getting your sport sorted out. And that's important. Some of the exercises we do, I've, had, I've been thrown out a few gyms because they, they say it's contradictory exercises. Yes, it is, but not for judo. The groundwork, you've got to put your body in under stress and strain and put them in bad positions. You've got to build them muscles up. You've got to get them weak. You're only as strong as your weakest link. And our muscles are great to have a big bicep, but your forearms are no good, or your gripping is no good. It's no use having biceps. You've got to get all your range. All your muscles have got to be developed. And to do that is really, really very difficult. And so you've got to work very hard in the gym. And when I say work very hard, not three sets of benching 
and not sitting down and having a rest is you bang, 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 and you do an hour to an hour and a quarter of that every moving weights. And believe it or not, you get very, very strong when you train with me. Very, very strong and very, very fit. You might hate me, but you get fit and strong. And I don't care if you hate me. But I actually like when everybody hates me, then I feel cons uh, there's a consensus. I know exactly what I'm going to do, walk into a room. Everybody hates me. So I'm great, I don't It's when I get halfway from make, making love to me and half of them hate me, and then I thought, well, oh, damn, which way do I turn? I got everybody to hate me, and I'm happy. It's great, no, bro no problem to it. <laughs> Judo a few years ago was the creme of the creme. Nobody could go because we had leg grabs and movement, all that. And what's happened is judo's been hampered now with the rules, completely hampered. And if you see some more wrestling, it's just like judo was years ago. But the judo players had more, more skills, more throwing techniques. So the some more wrestlers you get caught out. Some more only came out in 1988 when the Russians came out. And in 92, that was the year the Russians beat the Japanese with some more wrestling. And the Japanese never really liked that. So what they do, they've now taken away a lot of the movements that we could do in judo to make it, trying to make it different to what it is. And really, we should go back to what we were. And it'll bring, bring judo back to level one. And the trouble is in this country is, when something new comes in and it works, oh, we, oh God, we can't do that, can't do that, can't do that. Bring it in, embrace it. I mean, I went to a meeting where not long ago, people said, what are we going to do with these Brazilian jiu-jitsu boys? I said, well, bring them in. We haven't got enough judo players. Bring them in. Get them in. We need to get them in. Get them changed. Do the things. Don't push them away. Bring them in. And judo was only a form of wrestling. And judo wasn't really started in 2000, uh, beginning of the Japanese. There's a tomb in Egypt which I did a paper dating back 3000 BC. And all the moves that you do in judo is painted on the wall there. So the Egyptians really did judo then. And because really, you remember, them days, we only had a stick to fight with, and when you didn't have a stick, it was go one to one. So you had to learn skills. And there's every country in the world's got a form of wrestling. No matter what you call it, it's a form of wrestling. Judo's a form of wrestling. It's a bit of form of wrestling. And you know, just change the rules. So, so embrace things. Don't knock, don't, don't knock it away. Bring it in and learn to learn, live with it. That's what I really believe in. When I was a young player, I, I always found women was a waste of space. I was, I was a, ruth, a very ruthless player, I just wanted to win. And at the time, women's judo was not really, it had no structure to it at all. So it, you just got people coming in and messing around. And of course, when lads see women, they don't want to mess, you know, and I, I got, got fed up with it. And I, I was ruthless to it. Today, it's totally different. You've got a lot of good women now because they brought in from the were juniors. And they've got a terrific range of skills. There's some women out there, brilliant. I've got some terrific skills. They'll actually battle a lot of men. And it's beautiful the way women's judo has gone. Don't forget, it was 1988 before the women got in his style because that was the first time women got in the 1988 in the Olympic Games. And until then, it was always poo poo. People, oh, it's women's judo. Women's rubbish, rubbish. No, no, no. And it's, it's well structured. And some of the women have ah, got some terrific skills. And, yeah, the first woman in 1981, the organisation, didn't not want to recognise her at all, BGA, because A, we didn't have a structure in women, and B, she was from not the BGA, she was from BJC, but she still was the world champion. And she was brilliant, and she only weighed about 45k, but she had a tremendous skills. And, but the, the organisation was not really strong. But then in 88, women got, in, got involved, went to the Olympic Games, and women's judo then moved on. I mean, I have a girl who went to the Olympic Games from Manchester University, Rowena Sweatman, her name is, and she married one of the lads, and both of them went to the Europeans and both won the Europeans, one of my players. And also Ryan Birch, one of my players. I've, I've had that many stars, I forget who they are, actually, unless you're a pain, you know, I don't remember you very much, but, uh, you know, but right, Rowena and Ryan, I was the best man at the wedding, so it's good, you know. But just saying, the women's judo has moved on tremendously well, and it will get better and better because it's structure. If you don't get structure in any sport, it just flaps around. And if you want it to move on and push it right, teach it properly. It's very important that. Don't just ooh, do mess around with it. Now, some of, some of the martial arts is that people take the money, but don't put things back. I've been in this game now 60 years. 
I don't think some of the martial art people have only been in five minutes. In and out, gone. Made a lot of money, gone. It's not very good for the game, not very good for human beings, not very good for society, that sort of game. It also gives bad, bad, bad attitude, bad vibes to all the martial arts.